Good morning. Many of you undoubtedly already know our guest preacher this morning. Uh, David Brower-Riki served at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Milton Freewater. Many of you remember him from his service there. Um, he is also the Bishop Emeritus of the Oregon Synod of the ELCA, and he now serves as the Lutheran Disaster Response Consultant for the ELCA's Region 1. I am very grateful for his presence with us this morning and his willingness to bring us God's Word on this Holy Trinity Sunday. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, 
Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. A reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life.
Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the seraphs cried. The whole earth is full of God's glory. And the pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Documents from the state of Oregon, making somebody else's child my son. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, Paul writes. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And water with the words of Jesus. You cannot inherit the kingdom unless you are born of water and the Spirit. The wind blows where it chooses, Jesus said to Nicodemus. And you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. But Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can these things be? 
Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Forgiveness and call, as in Isaiah chapter 6, or adoption and familial realignment, as with Paul in Romans chapter 8, or rebirth and a spirit-infused freedom, which Jesus speaks of with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. What I want to talk about today are concrete realities, which are also metaphors for transition and identity. Today is the Sunday of the Holy Trinity. The mystery of the divine is about God's identity and ours. It is about transitions from what has been to what is yet to be. So let's talk with Paul about adoption. My new partner in the work of Region 1, Sarah Kruger, wrote a piece in the May Hammer and Dance that you might want to read. Sarah says she served for many years as an adoption social worker, quote, accompanying the families through the journey of adoption, navigating the grief and loss intrinsic to the adoption triad. The adoption triad, or trinity, that Sarah refers to, is that of the birth mother, or parents, the child, and the adoptive parent, or parents. The doctrine of the Holy Trinity speaks the same message. You see, it is God the Creator, our birth mother, who has given us life and given us over. She grieves because this life has been taken from her and lost. Our life has been taken from her and lost. The dreams of what might have been are gone. God's arms are empty. And Isaiah knows this as his divine mother's child when he says, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. Isaiah feels in his being, as do we, that which was supposed to be, but is not, and that he has lost, a future which he cannot regain. So Isaiah must navigate the grief and loss intrinsic to the adoption triad. We proclaim that the Creator God in allyship took on human flesh and was humbled, even unto death. Because you see, the birth mother in her pain cannot understand the life of the child. So it is that Jesus, who brings that story back to God, must be experienced and listened to and believed. And the Spirit of God, the adoptive parent, if you will, draws the story into her very self, altering the story as we are all born anew. Sarah and I both happen to be adoptive parents of children of color. Read Sarah's article. She says all this much better than I can. But we know as white parents of children of color that we are complicit in their pain and the injustice that surrounds them, even as we seek to hold them close and give them a safe place to be. We cannot replace the heritage that they should have had or tell the stories of their family. And so we grieve with them, even as we rejoice that they are now a part of our family. Part of the responsibility of being white parents or children of color is to do our work to understand their world, the realities that is our world all around us. And with Isaiah, we utter as parents of children of color that we are people of unclean lips in a world of unclean lips and deviant racial perspectives. This is a lesson we have learned through participation in the adoption triad, where we listen to the perspectives of those who have lost, the perspective of those we treasure in our own hearts. And we know that only through God's healing and hope 
that all can be made whole. And God's own self is revealed as Trinity in this adoption triad, with the focus always being on the child, Jesus the Christ. Now, when my 32-year-old Latino son tells me that security guards follow him through stores when he shops, I want to say, no, that's not true, you're just imagining it. But I can't. Just because it does not happen to me as an older white man does not mean it does not happen to him as a younger Latino man. So I must believe him. And as I wrestle with this, I wilt like Isaiah in the presence of God's angels. But the seraphs will have none of it. Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out, they say. I know I will re-offend, reframe. I know I will privilege my way out of my son's pain again and again. But nonetheless, these words are spoken to me. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Who will go for my son? That's the question. Who will go for Sarah's daughter? Who will go for all those names we repeat daily in our prayers? George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Andrew Brown. The Apostle Paul, now changing the metaphor but speaking to my fear, says, David, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When you cry, Abba, Father, it is the very spirit bearing witness with your spirit that we are children of God. My adoption as God's child does not fix my pain or replace my loss. However, it does give me a new place in which to stand and from which to live my life. I hope that is true for my son as well. Born of water and the Spirit, I am now a joint heir with Christ, and we together receive blessing and belonging and to share the kingdom. Just as my son shares with his two siblings, who are my biological children. But there is no difference. We are all family, and they are all heirs. So, today, on this Sunday, the only Sunday of the whole year, when we set aside the story of Jesus to talk about a doctrine. Today we do this because to understand God's love for us, we must understand the adoption triad. Without an understanding of what the Creator has lost through human greed and hubris, without being deeply rooted in the blackness the suffering, the exclusion, the injustice, and the bodily abuse and murder of Jesus, God's Son. And without an invitation to be reborn through water and the Spirit into the death of Christ and a second family of commitment and care. Invitation, the work of the Spirit. Without this, we cannot understand or serve or find our way or persevere in the struggle. But because we are humans, children of the Creator God, one with the soil and the sea. And because God did take on human flesh and committed God's self to doing the work and sharing in a brokenness, none of us can navigate alone. And because through the power of the Spirit, we are children of God, both suffering with Christ and being glorified with Him. Because, in fact, it is Jesus' blackness that is his power and purpose. Because of all that, our stories as Christians rest always with Jesus. So next Sunday we will return to the story of Jesus. But today, hear this voice with me. Who shall I send? will go for us. And I said, here am I. Send me. And you. We confess our common faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing water, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that, led by your Spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for the people of Palestine and Israel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray for this worshiping community, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who have died in the faith. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.